Hello, beloved. This is Pastor Whipple from the historic Mount Hebron Baptist Church, and I want to officially welcome you to online worship. Whether you're viewing us live or on a replay, thank you for joining us on today. We invite you to share this video on Facebook, share it on our YouTube page, and always go to our website, mounthebron.org. Now, either during this broadcast or at the conclusion, I invite you to sow into this ministry. Find us on Cash App. Our cash tag is dollar sign M-O-U-N-T. H-E-B-R-O-N, number two, number six, number five, number one, or follow us on Givelify at the historic Mount Hebron Baptist Church. Either way you're joining us today, thank you again for joining us. Share this video and get strength for your journey. Be blessed.
I thank God that I can depend on him no matter the situation, no matter the circumstance. I thank God that he has always been there for me in my life in trials and tribulations. When I decided to choose everything else except for him, he was still there. Times that he has protected me from seen and unseen danger. I should not be here right now, but because of God being the friend that he is, the privilege to stand here and speak to you to tell you how free my God is. There's not a friend. The hymn says he will guide you until the day is done. Which means he will take care of every obstacle in your way. He will make a path for you when you don't see a way. Father God, we just come to you saying thank you God. Thank you for being there for us ever step of the way. Thank you for guiding us, God. Thank you, Father God, for showing us you are Alpha and Omega, Father God. So we come here this morning, Father God, to, to praise and give you the worship you deserve, Father God. Knowing there is no other God beside thee, Father God. There is only you, Father God. So this morning, Father God, we pray right now that you center ourselves, Father God, and let us focus on you right now, Father God. We don't care what's happening outside, Father God. We don't care what's happening on the news, Father God. But right now, Father God, between the hours that we are here and until we leave, Father God, let us be focused on you and you only, Father God. And we anticipate you. You to show up and do what only you can do, Father God. This is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Bring it home. <laughs> Bring it home. But I want to thank everyone here for everything they have done. I want to give acknowledgments to all the leaders here. And last but certainly not least, I want to give a sanctified shout out to my wife in the back who is working hard 24 7 with that little one in her arms. I tell you, y'all be having a good time when he run, not us. I'm telling you right now, try to chase that little kid. I promise you, you will be disappointed. He's already a little mini running back. He has juked me so many times. I have ended up on the floor and I was embarrassed. Couldn't believe it. Had the time I shoot to play it off. Like, boy, you know you ain't getting me that time. Amen. Amen. Uh, and of course, like I said, want to just give um, acknowledgments to our pastor who is not here. Certainly a great man uh, of the Lord. Certainly a great shepherd. Um, I am so happy to be under his tutelage to be able to serve and learn under such a great teacher and just a straight great man of God. And not only that, he is a good friend. <laughs> Very. Those of you know, oh my goodness, we had the trustees just telling us, I'm sorry, we had uh, Dr. Taylor telling us to help and give him some things. Um, because of what he does, and I was just thinking about all of the events that this brother supports. It doesn't matter what you have. It could be your first birthday or your 95th birthday. He's going to be there taking a picture and posting it. He was at almost every event I had, and I was so shocked and surprised that he showed up and stayed and ate food and had a great time. So I tell you, I just want to say let's give honor and acknowledgments to a man who supports his congregation. All right, if you can stand with me, if you can stand with me, I will be reading from the book of Luke. The book of Luke. I will be reading from the book of Luke. It'll be Luke 10. Luke 10. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. I will be reading from the New King James Version. So if you have a different translation, it may read a little different. And it reads as thus. Now it, now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him, Jesus, and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Lord, let the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, my Lord, my strength, and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. As you take your seats, as you take your seats, look at your neighbor and tell them, one thing needed. One thing needed. Needed. I love this sermon or this passage, passage so much because it lets us know that throughout life, no matter how busy you are, there is one thing that's needed. You see, during slavery, slaves were only taught scriptures that the masters wanted them to learn. The slave masters knew their teachings were indoctrination, but they continued because they kept the slaves uneducated and controlled. However, however, some slaves were able to obtain the scriptures and learn for themselves the rich teachings of God's love, grace, and mercy. Upon learning, upon learning that about the scriptures, these slaves felt motivated. They were gaining strength for a journey. These scriptures gave them a new meaning to life. 
they began to cultivate a relationship with God through these teachings. Instead of sleeping in the midnight hours, instead of complaining about their situation, instead of letting their obstacles barricade them in fear and distractions, they sought ways to spend more time with the scriptures. They knew that no matter what, spending time and building a relationship with Jesus was the one thing they needed. How else am I going to believe that I can be free? It's in these scriptures that Jesus is showing me that he cares for me and that one day I will be free. Even though this master who is telling me I am nothing, he is showing me all of these whitewashed doctrines of the word of God. I am learning about God myself and he is showing me that I can be free. So I must spend time with these scriptures. No matter the circumstances, they snuck off in the midnight hour to spend time with Jesus. Spending time with their Savior was worth any risk of discipline in their eyes. They didn't care if they were going to get whipped, if they were going to get punished, if they were going to have to be in isolation. All I know is I'd rather risk that than risk not having time to spend with my Savior. As we transition to the text, as we transition, many of us are busybodies, as they call it, right? Myself, I have so many things that I do. And I realized, as I'm looking at Martha, Jesus said, don't you know you just like Martha? And I said, what, 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 wait, no, well, um, uh, mm, okay, I don't, I don't want to be the one to try to argue with Jesus. He knows how to shut you right on up when he talks to you. And I said, Lord, he said, well, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're doing this, that, and the third, and you wonder what's going on within you. Slow down. Yeah, yeah. Slow down. Yeah. I said, okay, well, 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 he said, you hear me talking to you? I said, yes, because you finally slowed down. Yeah. You missed so much I said over the weeks, months, and maybe even years because you were so busy trying to do this, that, and the third. I said, okay, God, you got my attention. He said, well, let me tell you about Martha. I said, well, what about her? So as we transition into this text, Jesus was visiting Martha and Mary. Once Jesus was inside the house, we see Martha is busy working, preparing for Jesus as Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet. The Bible says that Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. First of all, yo, I can't believe Martha had the unmitigated goal to speak to Jesus that way. <laughs> Martha must have lost her mind not to only question Jesus, but say, do you care? But then she had the audacity to tell Jesus what to do. Tell her to help me. I love Jesus' response. Because Jesus' response, unlike my response, was a little different. Jesus responded, Martha, Martha. Now, if that would have been one of us, and let somebody say, tell her to help me. I can see right now that her would have said, first of all, <laughs> Y'all know how that go, right? First of all, you ain't gonna talk to me like that. No, no, hold on, Jesus. Who are you? But Jesus, I love his response. His response exemplifies Proverbs 15, 1, that says a gentle answer. I'll say it one more time. A gentle answer turns away wrath. But a harsh word stirs up anger. Yeah, yeah. Jesus responds knowing that she is already hostile. He responds gently, Martha, Martha. I'm going to bring your hostility down some. Because if I match it, who knows what may take place. So I'm going to respond slowly. <laughs> He responds subtly, 
and calmly and says, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. <laughs> Notice Jesus' response teaches us how to respond to someone that is approaching you with hostility. Notice he is showing us when someone is, a, is approaching you and responding to you with hostility, don't match it, respond gently. This is how you test, watch this, your growth in Christ. Folk may yell at you, folk may act irate, but it is still your responsibility as Christians to respond gently. Why? Because the argument you are about to have may not even be the main problem. Jesus responds to Martha with gentleness, informing her that Mary isn't even the issue. You are troubled about many things. The issue that Martha has is many distractions. That's her problem. She has many distractions. Jesus is saying to Martha, your outward reactions are displaying your inward problems. Say that one more time for the people in the parking lot. Jesus is saying your outward reactions are displaying your inward problems. The idea is that Martha was drawn around and twisted with anxiety and worry. She was distracted, running here and there, being drawn by the cares of this person and that person. Jesus didn't exactly say what her distractions were. Instead, he exposed the foundation of her problems. It reminds me, it reminds me of how we are when we go to the doctors. We go to the doctors and we want to tell the doctors our symptoms. Yeah, doc, I have back pain because of an accident 35 years ago. Yeah, yeah, it hasn't bothered me since I was a teenager, but now it's back. I'm sure some pain meds is all I need. After we finish our self-examination, the doctor that gives us a proper examination and diagnosis that explains the root to our problem. The diagnosis we gave the doctor only explained the pain. But the doctor's diagnosis gave us the root to where the pain was coming from. This is how Jesus approached Martha. Instead of answering Martha's question or granting her request, which would have only provided temporary satisfaction, Jesus gives a diagnosis that reveals what the main problem is. <laughs> he reveals what the main problem is, and he told Martha that she was upset about many things. Mary wasn't the problem. She was just on the receiving end of Martha's lashing out. And like Martha, most people don't even know they have a problem until Jesus has to expose it. Some of us walk around carrying distractions that cause us to lash out at friends, co-workers, and even loved ones. We have so much on our minds and hearts. Our souls are so heavily burdened. The toils of this life can take a toll on you. Check this out. Grocery shopping nowadays is like making life or death decisions. It don't make no sense how much AIDS costs. It don't make no sense that I gotta try to see who got food stamps around here. It don't make no sense. Everything has gone up except our paycheck. Gas has crept back up again. I don't know if it's cheaper to drive or catch the bus. <laughs> Some of us are even carrying burdens of the past that are affecting decisions of our future. With all this baggage, with all this baggage, plus possibly 
more. It is easy to lash out in anger against someone during a small argument. <laughs> we are living life daily, trying to ignore all of the distractions. I'm sure many of you have experienced an argument with your friend or spouse, and after you, after the argument, you're wondering, what were we even arguing about in the first place? It, 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 it wasn't even, it wasn't even that serious for us to be having this major argument. What's, what's going on? You know, the argument could be so simple. With me being, me, I got a question for, for the ladies, if y'all don't mind. I got it can be so simple. Ladies, is it really that serious when a man leaves the seat up? <laughs> like, like, can't you just check before sitting down? <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, I, I'm just saying. It be, they be ready to start World War Three over the toilet seat. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I understand, we gotta compromise, right? We gotta compromise. When you're in a relationship, you have to compromise. And I understand that. So if it's that serious, can you share and allow us more space than just a corner of the bed? That's, that's all I'm asking. That's all, that's all, there we go, I got somebody right there. That's, that's all, that's all, fellas, we are tired of having a queen or king size bed yet we operate with a twin size portion every night. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm gonna be holding out of here, so I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. That, that, that wasn't worth it. How about this, how about this, how about this? Can you share the blanket? I don't understand for the life of me why the fan or the window needs to be open in the middle of winter. See, we laughing now. We laughing. We laughing, but these start major arguments in the households. But that's not the main issue. We have arguments about simple things like this, and it's minute. But you'd be surprised how many serious arguments start with these simple issues. And it doesn't have to be that way. And this is why Christ transforms you inside out. He first deals with the root of your problem by exposing to you who you really are. So you got Let me say that one more time. He exposes to you the root of your problem by showing you who you really are. Notice I didn't say he fixes you by exposing others. No, he fixes you by starting with you by changing you on the inside out. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, I am a new creature in Christ. The old has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. My mind is now new. My walk in life is now new. My Temper is now new. My response is now new. My reactions are still are now new. Now look, I may be able to withhold my response verbally, but bear with me because my facial expressions still need a little bit of work. Holler back at me if you understand what I'm talking about. My response verbally may be held under control, but my facial response still needs some work. So please don't push me because I am still human and sanctification is a process. In other words, my God is still working on me. You gotta let people know I'm saved, not soft. There's a difference. I'm saved, not soft. So please don't test me. Let's recap off the situation. Jesus notices and points out the real reason that Martha was calling about Mary was because she was worried about many things. Martha wasn't only upset about wanting help, there was much going on within her. Yeah. Jesus has a way of pointing out the main source of your issues. Sometimes we keep so much bottled up 
or the inside that the next little thing causes us to react with an outburst. We end up lashing out on someone and treating them as if they're the main source of our problems. For Martha, Mary not helping was just the straw that broke the camel's back. Jesus, without giving an answer to Martha, provides a diagnosis. Then, like the great doctor he is, he provides the remedy. He tells Martha that Mary is doing the one thing needful, which is sitting and spending time with me. Mary, 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 unlike Martha, Mary, on the other hand, Mary, she stopped everything. This is what I like about Mary. I want to be more like Mary. I want to be able to, to stop everything. She stopped everything and pursued to spend time with the teacher. I love the way it says she sat at Jesus' feet, which means she positioned herself attentively at the feet of Jesus. And what amazes me most, Brother Flowers, is that Jesus wasn't all going to her house by himself. He wasn't traveling alone. Therefore, it was Jesus plus others, which means Martha and Mary had a place big enough to entertain multiple guests. With a resident of this size, why then would Mary sit at Jesus' feet when she could have simply sat beside him? She could have simply stood in front of him. Mary understood who Jesus was and she humbled herself and put herself in a position to say, I am here and I need thee. What I love, what I love about this particular passage, what I love about this is that there are three, three main characters, y'all. Three main characters. Mary, Martha, Jesus. However, we only hear dialogue between two people. Jesus and Martha. Mary is the subject <laughs> of this conversation. Yet, she doesn't say a mumbling word. The Bible says in Exodus 14, 14, that the Lord will fight for you and you have only to be silent. I love how Jesus got married and says, I got your back. Martha, check this out. This is what you need. You see, what this is showing to me is this playing crisis omniscience and crisis omnipotent. It is showing on one hand that Christ is all-knowing omniscient because he knows exactly what it is that Martha needs. And he's telling Martha and ministering to her, revealing and exposing to her what's going on. And on the other hand, he is showing his omnipotent all power by being able to defend Mary and make sure that Mary gets the ministry she needs at the same time. He's empowering Mary through his teaching while also defending her. Through Mary, we see a position of humility. She's just quietly ignoring all distractions, focusing her mind on Jesus. While Martha, 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 Martha exemplifies your average working person trying to make ends meet and get things taken care of. Mary represents that needed balance in our lives. It's not a problem to work like Martha. Long as we don't forget about spending time with Jesus. Jesus is letting all of us know that when we balance our lives and prioritize spending time with Jesus, we experience life differently. When we spend time with Jesus, we begin to think like Christ. We begin to love like Christ. Our ways become more and more like Christ. We feel empowered, having the strength to overcome. When we spend more time with Jesus, we become consumed by his presence. All we can see or hear is Christ. <laughs> I love spending time 
with Jesus. Because when I'm spending time with Jesus, when I'm in his presence, I know that there are folk whispering about me, but I know that Christ will defend me. I love when I'm in his presence because I know that I'm safe in his arms. I know that there are folks defending my name because of my past, but Christ says I favor you. <laughs> I know folks are conspiring. I know folks are telling lies, but Christ is saying I am going to uphold you. <laughs> but first it starts by spending time and sitting at his feet so we can obtain his teachings. I know my work schedule is hectic, but I gotta spend time with Jesus. Spouse and kids want time, but I gotta spend time with Jesus. If I am to be a better spouse, a better parent, or a better person in general, I need to spend time with the Father. That way, when, they, when we abide in Christ, we become more like Christ. Christ said, whoever abides in me bears much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. I love when the psalmist sings this song. He says, I need thee. Y'all know this good old Baptist. And he says, I need thee. I need thee. Not my spouse. Not my friends. But Lord, I need thee. I need thee. It was a loud cry. The psalmist repeats again. It says, oh, It reveals what you need to realize how much you really need him. We realize how messed up we really are. Damaged folk, broken folk, trying to be the best parents we can be. Damaged and broken, trying to be the best parent and spouse we can be. I love this psalmist. He says, oh Lord, I need and then he goes on, not just briefly, not just for a moment, not just for the month, but every hour. He says, oh Lord, I need you. Every hour, every second, every minute, I need thee. Then the psalmist says, oh Lord, bless me now. With the teacher, I anticipate the blessing. So I cry out, bless me now, bless me now. When he sits there and he gives Christ the title, he says, my Savior. My Savior. My Savior. The one who traveled to Calvary, got hung high. And he hung his head for me. He died. But that's not how the story ends. For we know in three days, he rose again with all power in his hand. So I say, oh, Lord, bless me now. My Savior, bless me now.